Okay, here we go. Vera, yeah. please introduce yourself and tell us about Android animations. Awesome. Well, welcome guys. My name is Vera. I'm an Android engineer. I've been doing Android works for eight years now. And um, I, uh, I've worked at a startup for a long time. So I've seen, I've not only worked on like specific areas or anything, I've like been through the whole development cycle over and over again. Um, but today I want to focus on, on one topic, which is animations and give a general overview of what you can do on Android and how you do certain things. Um, as always with Android, there are a lot of ways to do one thing or two things. Um, but, and so it is kind of, it is very helpful to know all the tools that you have in your toolbox and when to use which one and what to look out for um, when, you, when you work on that. Um, I have a presentation, I have some slides, um, and, but I also have Android Studio running with an emulator, so we will also run some code and see how things are working. Um, because I always feel like it helps to, to see things and, and actually play with it. I'm not a good learner with this um, theoretic knowledge. Um, do I just keep the animated slides like this because I'm going to switch back and forth, or do you want them to be full screen? I think what you should do is go to the next slide, just whether, yeah, that's good. Okay, the first slide was coming in kind of weird, so that's fine, then the next oh. slide is good. Okay, okay. Uh, whatever you'd like, whatever you want most okay. I'm, I'm gonna keep it like this for now and we'll see how, how I think I will switch back and forth quite a bit, so yeah. I'll, I'll, um, so I'm just gonna start with like generally what are animations, um, and it's pretty much everything that, that changes the state of a visual element over a certain time span. Um, on the screen, so um, something moves, as in like it changes where it's located on the screen, or it changes its size, or it changes its color. Um, examples are like, for example, just scrolling a recycler view. You're not writing an animation, but you're inherently using an animation that has been written for you. Um, screen transitions are a big version of animations where a whole screen does something, um, sliding in the drawer menu, swiping a view pager or a progress bar that, that loads or, or spins. Um, these are all animations, even though you wouldn't necessarily write an animation for them. It's but, not what I would think of as an animation, but yeah, you're right. But it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, someone else wrote them for you, which is nice because they're very common, right? Like if you want to show a list and, and scroll in it, you don't want to bother with make more elements appear from the bottom kind of stuff. Uh, so someone did that. Um, but obviously there are a lot of other animations that, that, you, that are spe specific to your app and, and so you have to write them yourself. Um, so that brings us to the next question. Why, why are we doing them anyways? Like it's extra code. Um, they sometimes are slow, it's just more to debug or to maintain. Um, but animations are very helpful for the user because our real world doesn't work in static images. So we're very used to seeing transitions between states. Um, like if I take a plate from, from the cabinet and put it on the table, it's not in the cabinet and then suddenly on the table, I grab, like it moves. And so that's how we're used to perceive change. Um, and that, and if we do that on a screen, it helps a user to perceive change and that and see what happens like for example a progress bar tells you something is ha like something is loading in the background even though you can't see it um, or a view pager could mimic flipping through a book um, or just something simple as like a button has been clicked like yes you definitely clicked it it's not wrong like there is a visual indication that that some that you touched it um, and one of the button example is one of the easiest to do in um, in Android, where again, you maybe wouldn't really know you're writing an animation, but if you assign a selector as a background to a button and you give it two different states, you have an animation, <laughs> especially if you even um, go so far as to um, define the duration of the animations that should uh, show the transition between the two different backgrounds, um, which I, showed here in this code where you can 
you can add an enter and an exit fade duration um, for the for the button changes. Um, this inherently means like you're not defining what kind of animation it is. The system does it. It's called a fade animation. Um, and then you just hope that that works for your case. And for most buttons, that is a perfectly fine way of showing a, a state change. And, uh, and you don't have to worry about optimizing it or making it faster or, or whatever. The system handles this. And if, if ever they want to do something about it and make it better in any way, like you just get the changes no matter what, because you just use their system, which I think is always a good idea. Um, you can overdo this. So there are some, <laughs> there's an anti-pattern to animations, like especially in the beginning, some, sometimes it gets exciting and you're like, oh my God, I can, I can do all these things with, with all the stuff on the screen. And it's like, I, I remember when PowerPoint became a thing in schools and university, it was like every screen transition had to be fancy and every word had to like drop in from the top or something. And so it can, it can get to a point where it's too much. And, that was and the early, early World Wide Web where everybody, yeah, I'm was old. Doing, <laughs> where every, everybody was doing what they had learned the day, the day before. Exactly. Yeah. And like, show, let me show you all the things I can do. Yeah, Not exactly. Let me Linking things and whatever. Yeah. Um, so um, you should use them wisely. Um, if, if too much is happening on the screen at the same time, the user will not be able to get the benefit of like, I understand what's actually going on here because it's animated for me. It's like chaos in their head. Um, also, if animations take too long, they basically put the user in a timeout and they just have to sit there and wait until your fancy animation is done. And while it might be a very pretty animation, but if they've seen it 10 times, they just want to get their stuff done and not watch that animation. Um, so be careful around that. Um, or if they are too fast, or especially too many too fast, it can actually be perceived as something is wrong because it looks like it's flickering or like, it just doesn't, if it doesn't make sense, the user's mind usually goes into something is wrong here. Right? If there's an error, even though your code might be executing perfectly the business logic, but it's not communicated to the user. So these are just things to watch out for when you're animating things. Um, obviously all of these, if you do too much on an Android phone, especially on certain Android phones can also just um, take up too much, too many of the resources. And then the whole experience will suffer because your phone is just busy rendering all these animations and other things are slowing down. So. so is it very common to have very different performances on different kinds of phones and have to watch out for that and test on? Yes, and there's, there's often even apps that say, like they have like logic in there that only runs certain animations on certain phones like of a certain class. Yeah. So, but that's, like, that's not one-on-one animation. Right, 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 right. That's, that's further up. Um, yeah, but at least Android lets us do that. Um, so on Android, there is, as I said, there are a variety of ways of doing animations. Um, some of them have built in, as we saw, like a recycler view, for example, screen transitions, the, the, the selector for a, a background of a button, for example, is a built-in animation. And it's just a defined way of doing something that is very common to do and the user almost expects. Like if you click a button at this point on a phone app and there's no visual indication that you clicked it. It's kind of weird. Um, th so use those whenever applicable. They are, they are done well. These people know what they're doing. You don't have to handle any special cases. Um, but of course, there's other things you might want to do and you can't. Do. And so the, we're going to go through the ones that I've listed here. Um, there's image animation, bitmap and vector. There are view animations, and then there are layout animations. And I mentioned, and I have a slide that shows physics animations, and there is a library for this, in, or like there's an API for this in Android. I'm not going into it. Like if you want to do that, you probably know certain things about animations at this point. Like um, th that would be maybe version two or three of this talk. Um, but I wanted to mention it. Like so, if you just Google physics-based animations Android, you will find plenty of resources to to go into. Physics-based animations, I imagine, are quite complicated. Yeah, and, and you dangerous. have to really know what you're doing, even from a UX standpoint or from like a visual standpoint. Like, what does a spring do for me, and why do I want to use a spring? Right, right, right. That kind of stuff. Like that wasn't something I wanted to get into here. Right. Um, 
So I'm going to start with image animation and we're going to start with bitmap. And what this literally means, it's like a flipbook. There is multiple images that show a progressive uh, series of images um, that either tell a story or they're like something moves when you flip through it. And, and they're basically just like a flipbook shown in rapid succession. Um, and then the user brain, our brains are made like that, um, perceive this, perceives this as an animated series. Um, and it's literally called an animation list. Um, and, and as you can see here, you can say one shot true, which just means it runs once. You can make it repeat, whatever you, there's a, we can look at the values that are available here. It's probably just true and false. Um, and then you just define each image in the order that you want them to show up. I will sh we will look at this in Android Studio. You will see the, the code and the images. And then you say how long each image is visible. So you can even play with this. You could show one image for 200 milliseconds and another one for 300 milliseconds. But I don't know how that would be perceived <laughs> visually. Um, and then in, oops, sorry. And then in code, um, I will go through the code in, in Android Studio. So I'm going to switch over. Um, so don't pay attention to the cop, the, uh, the, image, the commented out code because I just prepared a bunch of examples um, for us to look at. But basically here are my shark images. Um, I have eight of them. And you can maybe already tell as I'm showing them to you, like you're making up a little story in your head. Now what uh, I'm seeing is I'm, I'm seeing the PowerPoint, not the images themselves. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how, let me stop sharing. And then maybe I, if I, sh I thought I said, yeah, I think what you have to do is share a different, um, a ah, different here we go. I, now I have the right. There we go. Okay. So I'll go back to my main activity. So don't pay attention to the commented output. We'll get to it. Um, but what we're going to look at first are these images. So this is my, my little sequence of a shark chasing Cute. a fish. <laughs> I didn't draw this. <laughs> okay. Um, and then in, in my activity, I, have, um, I just have a base layout and we're not paying even attention to the button. We're paying attention to the image view and the image view is just um, put in the middle of the screen. And then in my main activity, this is written in Kotlin right now because I wrote a lot of Kotlin when I wrote this. Um, but um, I will, I, if there's any questions what stuff means, just ask me, but it, it should be pretty uh, clear. So I'm just finding the image view. I'm um, setting a background resource and it's called bitmap animation, which we'll look at. And then we ask the image view, give me your background as an animation drawable. And then we say, when I click on the image view, start that animation. So the magic lies in the bitmap animation, which is here, which is what I showed you in, in code on the, um, on the presentation. So it's literally just a list and it, it has all the images and has the durations. That's it. Um, so can we go back to the code again for a sec? So we, we said that drawable, it's, it's, it, it is identified in Android as a drawable, right, but it right, actually right. Is, a, is a list of drawables in a way. Right. As, as the background. And then we can ask the image view to get us the background as an animation drawable, which is a type in Android. Sure, sure. Um, and then in we have casting to, in Java. It's called it shark animation. Right. Um, and it's an animation drawable type. And on that, we can call start. So I just on click on the image, I start that animation. Okay. So I'm going to run this and we're going to. Sorry, I just have to move things to. I might send you a question offline about that as animation drawable part. Um, sure. Just started with Kotlin and I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Oh, this is the as is the cast. No, I understand that, but there's, okay. there's, I'll, we'll do it offline. Okay. So don't pay attention to the button. We don't need this right now. Um, I'm seeing the first image because I've set this drawable as my background resource. Um, so I'm seeing the first and then I click on the image and then my sequence is played. Cool. Um, I, I could probably reset it now or whatever. If I click again, nothing happens because I already played it. Um, but that is like 
one of the simplest way of doing an animation. If you have someone who can make you a sequence of cute images that make up an animation. <laughs> and um, obviously the other downside here is um, you add a lot of images to your, to, your, um, to your project. And especially if you support multiple screen sizes and so on, you would really blow up your, um, your, your project, your APK size. Um, so be really very conscious about when you want to do this. Like if it's something small, fine. Um, I wouldn't show a whole feature film like this. That, that would definitely blow uh, your APK size out. But it's an, it's an option to do something, especially for like things that are maybe more artistic, where it's like, you know, doesn't need to look like perfect strokes everywhere and stuff like that. So if that's the point of your app, you can use this. And it's literally extremely easy to do that. You put the images in, you put them in a list and you start play. Um, so that's an okay. option. Mm -hmm. cool. Let me let me just uh, remind everybody that if you want to ask questions, just unmute yourself and chime in, please. Yes, please. Um, otherwise, I will continue and we'll go to vector graphics. Can you see the presentation again? I can. Okay, awesome. Um, so um, vector animations are animations that are done on vector graphics. Um, I don't know if I need to explain vector graphics on Android, but um, basically it's like an SVG subset that Android can interpret and was added a few versions back. Um, and it has pretty good backward compatibility so far. So um, I would recommend at least any icons that you have and like images that are not too complicated to add as vector graphics because the upside here is that you don't have to add different versions to different size. Uh, like density buckets, but you can just, um, the, the, they will be rendered live, so they will be rendered according to the density of the phone, which um, helps with resources, keeping resources small, and then keeping them really sharp because they're drawn for the screen, and you can tint them anywhere you like, which is also very helpful. But you can also animate them because you actually are basically having access to every stroke or every part of that drawable that is being drawn. Um, so with, I'm going to go back to Android Studio because I have the full code there. Um, I'm going to copy this out. Put this in. Um, so I'm, I have my image view again here. We're just reusing the same image view for this. And I set a drawable called Anim Vector. The name is not great, but it's a name. You can see it here. Um, it, that stands for animated vector um, and basically is a collection. And in, in this case, um, you could also just only have one in there. And it, the, the whole thing points to a drawable that we're going to animate. And then I'll talk about these once we've looked at this, at this drawable. So it's a very simple shape. None of these animations are in any way like make sense or build up to anything. Don't expect a story. It's just a matter of showing what you can do. So this is a vector drawable in Android. Um, the canvas that we're dealing with is 600 by 600. And it has a group in here that is called rotation group. And, um, and the actual um, code to render that little triangle is here. And here, this is the color of the triangle, which I could change to, for example, this and then I have a blue triangle if I want to. And then, um, but so I have a group and you can group multiple paths and this like vector drawables are a whole other topic, but I can refer to this group and I can refer to this path in, specific, in, in particular. Like I can, I can address them in, in, my, in my animation definition. Um, and then that's in these, in this, in where I um, define the animation, I have two targets. And one of this, the rotation group. So that's the group that I had. And the other one, the name is subject, but it's, a, it's just V right now, um, is the actual path that draws the, the triangle. And I basically, the, each target just has like, which part of the drawable are you referencing? And what is the animation you want to run on it? So for the group, we, I defined an animator for vector rotation. And these things are called object animators. It's like, you need a couple of files to do it. That, um, so don't be, like, if it's a little bit confusing with all the files, don't, don't worry about it. It's 
once you do it yourself, it, it's not that difficult. Um, and then these object, an object animator can have, has a bunch of attributes that you can set. Um, for once, any animation has a duration, so you always wanna define how long should this animation run. And then you say, what do you wanna animate? And in this case, we're doing a rotation. Um, let me see, oops, nope, that's not what I wanted. Nope, I thought it there was an autocomplete maybe, no. Nope. Um, we can look at the values later, but like there's something like translation, translation X, translation Y, scale, and stuff like that. And then you say from which value to which value you wanna go. So right now, because we're doing a rotation, I'm doing a full circle, so we're going from zero to 360, which gives us a full circle. And then these are optional. You can say, do you wanna repeat this in any way? Um, you can say, no, I don't wanna repeat at all. You can say that you wanna repeat it indefinitely. And what I chose here is you animate it in one way and then you just reverse the animation back. And, um, and then how often you wanna do it. Which so you since can it's really infinite, say, that means it's gonna go- On and on and on until I leave that screen. <laughs> Plus 360, then minus 360, then plus 360, then minus 360, okay. Exactly. You can also say five, and then it does it five times. Right. Um, but so these are all the, all the little pieces that come together for, for this animated vector. Okay, can we see, now we're, we're, can you go back to targets, the two targets there again? The, um, okay, so what have I got here? I've got, um, I I'm basically to talking to the same, to, I'm talking to the group that holds the path and say, rotate. Right. And, um, and this will morph the path. So we haven't looked at the morphing yet. So that's a different, that's a different, a different, a different animation. type of animation. Um, right, okay, all right. Um, again, like duration and, and repeat mode and repeat count, but, and then the property name in this case is path data. So the, which so is so the two targets are two different kinds of animation of the same object. Yes. Okay. All right. Maybe we should just look at the animation. So there's, okay. it's clear what it does. And it's not fancy, but it does something. Android build times. Oh well. This is a teeny tiny app, but it's still. It gives us time to meditate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, to just start, there we go. So it started at the tri as a triangle and then it morphs into a, a, a rectangle and then we go back to triangle and then it does it backwards and all the way it rotates back. Okay, that's definitely not what I expected to see. Um, is this because we've got those two targets working at once? Yes. Okay. We will see animations later also with, where it's, there's an offset, but okay. so you, can, you can do multiple things at the same time. Like you can, you can grow something while moving it somewhere else or rotate something and move it somewhere. Or okay. Change the color while, while it's moving or scaling or something. So um, it's rotating and at the same time it's doing the other target and the other target is morphing it from a yeah. triangle into a rectangle and then back to a triangle. Yeah, and that's called path data animation or the property is called path data. Um, and for that, I don't really want to go into it because it's, that's, you have to, I don't know how much people know about vector graphics already and like that's very specific, but basically you can tell it how to draw the, the, the first, the origin, like the start uh, shape, and then you tell it how to draw the end shape. And there are certain restrictions, like you need the same amount of points defined. Right. And then the system will automatically figure out how to morph from one to the other. Okay. Um, so okay. That's, I just, that's an advanced our... thing to do, but it is, it's very powerful. One of our attendees, we're hearing scratching from your um, microphone. If you can, if, if you have a question, that's great. Um, please chime in. Um, if not, could you mute your speaker? Uh, the attendee whose name is Samsung SM. Is that him? I don't know. 
We're hearing something. I'm, I'm hearing it too, but I don't know who it is. Yeah, no, I see that it's Samsung SM, and if you could, if you could either, if, if you could mute, I think I might mute, mute. no, oh. left, okay, all right. Okay, oh. anyway. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Yeah, so that is a vector animation. So that can be used for any graphic that you have that is already in the vector format, um, and you want to animate it. That is something you should consider um, doing. Um, but especially if you want to go inside of the details of the, of the view, you don't want to just move the whole view, but change little things inside. The view. And it's just this tiny little bit of code, this tiny little bit of Kotlin or Java code yeah. that you're adding to your... And it will figure out all the transitions yeah. for you. You just have to do the prep work really well. Um, right, right. So, like, often, like, I would... My guess would be often enough a designer would, would help with that. Like, they would define the end point and the start point, and then you would just have to do the coding. I hope so. I'm terrible with... with well, but there, are, there are some people who are... I, I, can, I can do it. Like, there are more UX-focused engineers who... Yeah, no, I, any, anything I design is ugly, so. Oh. But I, I, I wanted to also mention it because it's just good to know that it's there. So right. your designer might not know that it's there, but together maybe you can figure out what is, what the, if this is appropriate for you to use. Um, I feel like that's a, often the case with Android. Like, just what are my options and what fits me best in, in the case that I'm dealing with? Um, some more, more, like, we're moving away from just images that we're animating to views, which is what we deal with in, in Android all the time. Our, all of our XML elements are views. Everything is derived from the main view class. Um, so that's something we probably have often a case that we want to animate. Um, I'm just repeating here that whenever an element changes its position, its size, its visibility, whatever, um, it's helpful for the user to understand that this is happening if it's done with an animation. It also makes it feel more deliberate instead of a view if it just like suddenly isn't there anymore. Again, the user might think, oh, something's broken. The view just disappeared. I don't understand what's going on. Um, in Android, there are two general ways of doing this. One is called view animation and one is called property animation. We're gonna go through both and see how they're different. Um, we're going to start with the view animation. This was the first way ever built into, like, from the start, that was something you could do on Android. Um, and it shows. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> it's, uh, it's much more limited than we will see for property animations. It, it basically supports alpha changes. So you can, say, make it visible 50% or 80% or 0% or whatever. Um, you can scale, so you can make something bigger or smaller. You can translate something. That means you can move it on the Y or on the X axis um, to move it to a different position on the screen. And you can rotate something. Um, and you can combine these again into a set. But that's really um, all um, you can do with this. And one of the biggest downsides that people really hated about it was um, if you animated something with it, um, like let's say you had a button at the bottom of the screen and then you would move the button to the top of the screen. If you wanted to click that button, you had to click at the bottom of the screen where the button used to be because only visually was the button moved up, but the actual click target was still at the bottom of the screen. Ugly. Yes. I mean, I mean, nasty. Yeah. What, what, Very what confusing a, also as a developer yeah, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you didn't know what was going on. Um, but you know what? You could animate things. I mean... It was if, I rem if I remember, there was a workaround for that. There was something you could do. Yes, there is, there, you could do something about it. You basically yeah. would then, in the end, after the animation, you would say, and now the view is up there. Yeah, yeah. But you had to know that you have to do this, and it was extra work for the... Right. Yeah, so it wasn't fun. But this is how you would define it, and we're going to go through the code. It's a set. We call it a set if we do multiple. Um, and the fill after um, was also something that a lot of people in the beginning stumbled over um, because if you would animate a view with a view animation in Android, um, like let's say you moved it from the, from, the, from the bottom to the top, once it finished, it would jump back down. It's like, I did my animation, I'm going to go back to my original state. Unless you said fill after is true. I don't know what the name, why it's called fill after, but basically that means, and then stay in your new state. Um, 
So, so just one other thing you had to know. Um, we're going to look at the at the code for this. I'll bring this out. There's my button. So um, I have an animation defined here. It's called view animation, and this is what you just saw on the slide. Um, it has a scale, and it has two scale animations, um, and it, it says from X scale to X scale, from Y scale to Y scale. I'll talk about the pivot in a second and then the duration. And the pivot just means which is the center point from which the animation is, um, is calculated. And we can play with this and then you will see the difference. And my second scale animation um, goes, has one specific item which is start offset, which means this animation will wait for 500 milliseconds before it starts executing. And if you saw here, my start, my first animation is 500 milliseconds, which means I've created a sequence. So this will start right away. It will last for 500 milliseconds. This one will wait for 500 milliseconds, which is when this is done. And then this one will start. Um, so I'm going to run it and then we'll play around a little bit with the, with the values. Um, but this is, a, this is, this was pretty much the way, to do a sequence at that point. Um, you just had to be careful with your numbers. And, um, but it, it works nicely. And you, could put, you can put an animation listener on it. You can, you can do something at the end of it, for example, and stuff like that. So they weren't that bad. You just had to know the, the tools. And it's, it's still fine to use them. Um, so the view that we're actually animating is the button. Um, so the first animation goes from one, which is basically 100% to 50% and the same for the Y. And because I did pivot 50%, it centers in the middle. Now, if I put, I'm going to put zero here. And then we're going to see how that changes the, an Oops, changes the animation. And you can also mix here, like these are just two scale animations right now, but you could, you can add an alpha in there, for example. Um, and the pink that you see when the button, when I click the button is, a, is, a, is the selector that we saw in the beginning. So now I, I made the pivot point zero. So pay attention to this corner and this corner shouldn't move. That's the idea. So that's what pivot. Okay zero does it, it contracts it to that corner and you can make that 20% and then it would probably, it would be around here where it contracts or like I just in the middle look like that would be what you would do with the button. It shrinks a little bit towards the middle or, or it comes up. Um, and like, so you can see here, these are our options that I listed in the, um, in the slide, there's alpha, scale, rotate, and translate. And then the set is the thing that keeps all of them together. Um, so if we want to, we could add an alpha here. And then we could say, oh, my computer is getting a little hot. From alpha, so right now, the, uh, the button state starts with 100%. Um, and let's say we want to make it 50% alpha. And then we would say, come on. I have to type it. We'll also make it 500. And because I'm not setting like a, a start offset, it will, this should run at the same time as, um, as the as the first animation, as the first scale. So it looks to me as if it'll stay in that it 0. Works. 0.5 alpha. Well, let's see what it does. But I think it does. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and that's also so just picked up. I just picked up a nice tip that I hadn't, hadn't noticed before, I hadn't discovered before, where you started typing from alpha and it filled in the Android colon part. Oh yeah, it does that. I haven't tried that before. I mean, I yeah, didn't yeah. even- I, I never typed the Android. 
I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know that that feature existed. See, I didn't know that you can just write tools at the top and you get the whole thing for the tools. Yeah. Like you can just write this. And, and you get you the whole, that. yeah. That I learned like a few weeks ago. <laughs> Android Studio is getting better and better. Yeah. Um, so this, that's, a, that's a classic view animation, um, but obviously limited in, in it just supports these few, few items that you can do, um, which probably was one of the reasons why the team came up with property animations later. Um, and I'm pretty sure at this point, all versions that, I don't remember what, how far back this is compatible, but if like, I'm pretty sure Ice Cream Sandwich supports this. And so you should be able to use these in your project. Um, and property animations are called this because you literally can animate any property your view has. Um, for some of them, it might just be on you to define what it means to animate it, but um, you can. Um, and in, in this version, they also solved the problem that when the animation is done, the view is actually in the location that you animated it to if it changed location at all. Um, so that made it a bunch easier and let you write a little bit less code. And, um, and they can be grouped again, and this time they called it animator set, um, and we will see um, how this is written. And there's two main classes. There is a general value animator, and then there is an object animator, which is a subclass of value animator. Um, for the value animator, it's literally that. It's an animator of a value. Um, it actually doesn't really do anything visually. Um, it gives you an update of a value. Um, so in this case, I create a value animator of int. You have to say, there is a bunch of them and we can look at the autocomplete what they are we're starting with we're going to do int and we're saying we're going from zero to ten so um that that's all a value animator literally does pretty much and then you can you set set a duration again because every animation has a duration and and then you add an update listener and um you you get an updated animation and then you get a value, the, the, and the updated value from it. So the, over time, it keeps updating you on what is the current active value. And, uh, and then we're, we're just setting it as the, as the string of the button, uh, as the text of the button for now. And at the end, I'm showing a toast. Um, and then I'm starting the whole thing. So you create the animator, you add a listener to it, and in the end, you're starting the whole thing. Um, and I made it really simple, like we're getting a number from one from zero to ten, and we're just showing it. But it's totally on you to you can do whatever with that number. That number could could change the color of the um, of the item or whatever you want to whatever the number can express for you. Um, but this is um, oops. This is the code for it. This is exactly the code that we just had um, on the slide. So we're still doing zero to 10. Oh, and I'm, I don't want to do this just yet. I'll have to run again. Um, and we're adding the, the two listeners, an update listener and a, a list. And adding an, an end listener is a little bit more code, but basically this is just to say we're done. You don't, if you don't need it, you don't need to add that. Um, um, I mean, I can talk about the set, the evaluator, um, which is if you basically want to do a little more with it, um, you can, you can define an evaluator that will take in whatever is the current value, the original start value and end value. And, uh, and then you can do some math for it, for example, which will then be the value that will be returned to your update listener. Um, in this case, I just made it count backwards from 10 to zero. So the evaluator just tweaks the value? Yes, so you tweaks in whatever way you want it, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so it, it starts with a zero. Oh, oh, haha, <laughs> it starts, sorry, it starts, um, it starts without a click, it had already run. So that's why it was, it was done. And this can especially be helpful if you have a custom view with a custom attribute. 
Um, and so you can actually animate that custom attribute if you can express something with a number with like if you can change an attribute that you want to change with a number for example text or a color or something so the bottom part now starts counting up that that's a maybe not something you think about as an animation but that is literally a value animation so <laughs> you, that you, was without the evaluator that was without the evaluator and then yeah. um, if i commented in we should see it go the other way so the value animator which is why i find it found it hard to like find an example is It's it's the it's the base class. It's the it's the parent class, and it's it's there, and you can use it. My, I don't think a lot of people actually use this. Um, Gives you optimum flexibility because you. Just, it can, yeah, you can. This is the class that you can do anything with. So now it counts right. down, instead of up, and then says that. Um, I just wanted to show it. It's like it's a class, and you can do something with it, but it's really abstract. Like you have to really like this, this is when you have something very specific to your case and you have to define everything that's that's the value animator um, idea um, but um, what you probably want to use more is an, is the object animator prop now I'm confused yeah that that's an object animator the the subclass um, so the object animator is, is basically the equivalent to the, we saw it as basically defined in an XML, um, where you say, again, it's of a, of a type of, of number, and then you say, say what view you want to animate, and then they have these types, again, translation, rotation, and stuff like that, and this is your end value for it. Um, I think it's easier to see in, in the code, so we're going to look at the code. Um, so I'm having the button example again. Um, so my button, I want to move it on the x axis 100 and on the y axis minus 100, and they have the same duration. And we'll comment this out. And, um, and then I create an anim animator set. And then I have like nice functions that are like play animation A before animation B. <laughs> um, so I can define sequences without jumping through the hoops of like. My first one is 500 milliseconds, so my second one needs to have an offset of 500 milliseconds, which is obviously very error prone. Um, so this gives you a better language to express sequences in, uh, for your animations. So I'm going to play this one. And again, it doesn't make much sense. It just shows that you can do it. Um, and uh, I think I will, there was a slide about it. I will not. I don't want to talk over this. So the button should show up again. And then it moved. It first moved to the side, which is the X, and then up, which is the, the, the B animation. So it played animation I didn't see it move to the side. Was that, or was oh, I? Oh, OK. Not? I'll play it again. I think I, I was like, why would I, I didn't, I, somehow I just didn't put click listeners on all of them. I don't know. Why. So, wait, what was that? That went pretty fast. That went, that was too fast. That, let was, me slow it down. All right. <laughs> and everything is in milliseconds. So the numbers are always high. Right. But it gives you more control. It looked as, it looked as if it had already moved to the side before it even ran. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Um, and I had the same on my computer. It wasn't the trans transmission of the Zoom. Right, 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 right. Ah, there we go. There we go. And now we can see it. Now we and it before it looked like it just jumped. And yeah. now we can see it actually sliding. So that's yeah. a perfect example of your earlier advice about not making the animations too fast. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. But this was so slow that you would be like, mm, move. Yeah, yeah, but that's, but that, it's just a toy app, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And one thing I want to mention now that we're just talking about it in the settings, um, in the developer settings, I always forget where they are now. Is it in system? No. I think back in system, maybe. It's where? I think back in system. Right? That's what I thought. Or maybe I haven't. Oh, about? Maybe I haven't. You maybe not have set, haven't set, yeah. Ah, now I'm the there developer. You know. Look at me. This is how fast you can graduate. Here. Why is this so slow? I think my computer is... Uh, it's open. slow because you're doing a demo of some sort. <laughs> um, but there are um, settings. So here, um, you can set, you can change the, the scale, which just means the, it's actually a, a ref, ref, refers to the duration. So you can, um, you can slow them down or speed them up. Um, so animated duration scale, you can say, don't play them at all, make them faster, which is 0 0.5, show them as defined, or, and then you can make them really, really slow, like right. our three seconds would suddenly be 30 seconds. <laughs> So that you can, for testing purposes. So you that can. helps with like, if you, do, if you don't have, if you don't want to change all the numbers all the time or whatever, right. you can just change it here and then you, you can see them done in a, in a different speed. Um, if it's about just, is it doing the right thing and not you're sitting there with your designer tweaking. Um, so. But they're, they're right there. And so there's transition, there's window animation and there's an animator. So you can be very granular in, in, in your debugging here. Um, so these are these are pretty great. Um, I think they're used widely. Um, um, you can combine. However, we can. I don't. I don't know that much about which which methods are available here. But apparently, there's play sequentially. So you can just give them a bunch of um, animations and play them one after the other. You can play them together. That means um, play them at the same time. You can just start one. You can reverse an animation. So it it gives you some. Some, some stuff to play with. Um, and uh, I had something else about these. And there's XML associated with these or, or have we? So yeah, you can define them in XML as well, which is, um, where was that one? So these, there's literally an XML tag called object animator and they have the same, I mean, the same parameters basically. So. I just like to define things mostly in, in XML, um, but these, because they are so short, um, are really nice to define in code. Right. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind doing it. Um, we can also see what else. Is. This was float. So there's RGB, R, ARGB, so you can actually animate a color properly, which is pretty cool. Um, so it like you can go from a red to a blue and it will have colors in between that make sense for our idea of a color spectrum. Um, there's float, there's int. I don't know what a multi-floater int is, and I have no idea what you can do with object, but probably very fancy things. Um, you just have to then know what you want to do with it. Um, that's on you to, to define. Um, I'm going to keep the float here. Um, and so what, what, what you can do is you can not only use, so this, these, these strings that define what you can animate, they literally just refer to setter and getter methods of that view. So the, the main view class on Android has a setter, met, met, a setter and a getter method for translation X, and therefore you can use this. But if you write a custom view and you have a getter and a setter for some other whatever custom attribute you have, you can animate it with this. You just name it appropriate. Like if your setter is called set background color and get background color, then you can translate, then you can animate your background color um, with an object animator. Um, It'll it's just find on, it automatically. Yeah, and it will, it will call these methods automatically. It will go by the name of the method to, to do that. Um, so you can, you can write quite fancy views with that. Um, you want to. And, uh, and then we saw the animator set where you can just combine things together. Um, 
now if we step out a little bit and we're not just looking at one view moving around, um, their whole layouts can move and animate and they're called layout animations. And um, one way to do them, which are again, less control for you, but more work, more stuff is done automatically for you and they might often work is literally just putting something called animate layout changes into the root layout of your, your file, your XML file. And if, if, you, um, if you change something in your layout, it will, it will be animated. Oh, sorry, I forgot, to, I don't have a slide for this, but there is a, a compat library for these um, view animations as well, for the property animation, um, which you can call like this. But it's if you use if you need compat um, support for for animations, this is the way to go. Um, just wanted to mention it, um, but we're going to go with layout animations now. And for that, I have to switch to a different layout. And we'll look at the layout. So what I have here is a text view with a big text in it, and I have a button at the at the bottom. Um, and I have animate layout changes set to true. And what I have here is, so at, for certain lower versions, you also have to um, activate that you want to animate transitions that are changing the layout. Um, automatically, it only does appearing and disappearing, but for some reason they didn't because maybe it was a performance thing, they didn't automatically say changing the layout also is animated, so you have to enable it specifically. You don't need this. Um, so I'm just getting the button again. We have the same button at the bottom. And then I say, um, get the text view with the, big, with, the, with the big blob of text in it and set the max lines to two and hide the button at the bottom. And, uh, and we'll see what that does. This time we have a click listener, so it's not going to happen suddenly. Um, but as you can see, basically all I'm saying, like, I have a certain layout, it has, it looks a certain way. And then I'm saying like, these are the things I want to change. I'm not saying anything about how I want to change them. Um, so the system has some stuff built in. Probably like if you change the visibility, it's probably going to be a fade animation or if you're, oops. If you're moving something around, it's gonna be um, a, a translation animation, but you don't have, I don't know what, I don't have to look at you. I'm that dinging that you hear is somebody trying to contact me. I'm gonna, Okay. if I can find them, I'm gonna. This one's. I can't find them on my screen. I'm just gonna ignore <laughs> for a moment. All right, let me see if I can. No available windows, weird. Okay, all right. I don't know what it was. Continue, please. Yes, I'm, build I'm just building. Um, so I have my text and I have my button. And all I'm saying is the, the max lines of text I wanna see is two. And I wanna hide my button when I click it. This is an on-click listener here. So that's what I'm, I'm going to click on it and we're going to see what happens. Whoa, that was fast. That was too fast for me. <laughs> we can do it again. Um, one thing is like, you don't have to define, a, you don't have to define a, a duration here. There's a way of doing it, but it overall, did, I, what, what, I guess what I'm saying is it didn't look, I didn't catch fully that it was actually animating. If you okay, maybe that. just focus on one of the views. Yeah. And then, okay. All right. So I'm going to click. Yeah, that was that was a big it's jump. It's fast, and but that's what, just what the system thinks yeah, is yeah, appropriate. Yeah. And also, be aware that right now you're looking to understand it. The system right, is right. optimizing it for the user to have a pleasant experience. Right. right? Um, so, but you can do this, and if if this fits your needs and it, it does automatically the things you want it to do, you're good. Um, you don't have to do anything. Right. Uh, and it's just a very easy way of uh, of making your screen a little bit more slick. And, and if we really want to see what's going on as, as uh, developers, we can slow it down via the exactly. developer options. Exactly, you could do yeah. that. And 
again, like I would have to look it up, but you can actually, you can, you can catch the animation, you can set a duration for it. Okay. So you can also make it slower. Um, but um, I don't remember how to do that yet. But everything is Googleable. And then there is um, another way of, of doing this, which is, um, is uh, there is a, it's a subset of something that's called scenes and transitions. Um, and trans transition is defined as a, a, a transition between two scenes. And um, a scene can be defined by a layout. I know this sounds very abstract. We're gonna go into a very specific case. And as we just saw, we can let the system do it by default. We just said like, this is my layout. This is the end state of my layout. Figure it out and then it will figure it out. Um, and if you go into more fancy ways of doing this, you can again combine them into sets. Um, and so one practical way of doing this is, is called constraint sets, um, which can only be used with a constrained layout. Um, so if you don't have experience with that, um, it's pretty much, it's similar to a relative layout, but has more options of um, lay, putting things in relation to each other. It has just more properties, so you can express almost anything you can express with a lay relative layout and a linear layout in, in one, and that gives you a very flat hierarchy. And um, with a cons what, if you have a, con if your root is a constrained layout, you can, in your code, call, you can create a constraint set, and then you clone your layout, your root layout, which then creates a constraint set that holds all the constraints that are defined in your, in your constrained layout. And then you do that again. And then on the second one, which is your end state, you can change the relations of objects. Like you can say, this is not like attached to the bottom of, the, of a view anymore, but to the bottom of a different view. Or you can change the size of, of it or whatever you want. Um, you can do a lot of things in a relative layout, so you can do a lot of things with this. Um, and then you, you can again say transition from constraint set one, which is my current view, to, my, to constraint set two, which is, which is the one that I change the, the properties of. So we can see that here. Um, I'm just, so my, my view is, a, my root layout is a constraint layout. And I still have this text view in here. And this text view is defined as it's connected to the parent top and to the parent sides. And it's bottom is connected to the top of the bottom of the button at the bottom. And, uh, and the height is wrap content, which is why it doesn't stretch all the way. It only stretches as much as the, um, I don't know how much people know what constraint they have. I can show you what it looks like with it. If I say zero, then it will stretch the whole thing because that's how that is defined. Um, and then my button at the bottom stretches the whole width because it is also sent, uh, anchored to left and right of its parent and it's anchored to the bottom of the parent. So that's why it's at the bottom here. Um, so that's my layout. So in my constraint set one, these are the constraints that are, that are encoded in the constraint set. And in constraint set two, I do exactly the same thing. And then I change something in constraint set two and I say the box, which is the text view. Now the bottom of it should now be attached to the bottom of the root. So if you remember what we had here, what is the bottom of it was attached to the top of the button. And what I'm saying is like now it should be the bottom of, the, of this should be attached to the bottom of the parent. So will that give you an inconsistent set of restraint constraints or is that, oh, no, oh, so that's can even it. write that here. I, I can, I can take this out. No, no, I'm sorry. Just keep. No, that's fine. I say parent. Oops. Oh, let, let, let's see it the way you were doing it first. Sure. Let's I mean, this whole thing hinges on knowledge about constraint layers. Sure, sure, sure. Let, let's, let's go back to the way you had it and let's see yeah, it run. I will play it. Um, so with that, you basically have very granular control over how things are 
you can change how things are positioned in relation to each other and you can animate those changes. Right. The button wasn't constrained already, so it's not a contradict. I, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the button is just sitting at the bottom. Of right, right. And um, I don't even remember if this, again, this might probably not, doesn't make much sense. And I think it makes more sense if I change the, the, the sizing of it. So this just moved because it basically right, centered right, right, itself right. in a different space. But if I set this to stretch the whole way, which means right now it's, it's parent top and button top. So this is all the space it takes up. And um, it's very hard to find examples that are like also make sense. It's, we don't have to make sense. These are, these are instructional. But it's more inspirational, I find, if it yeah, makes yeah. sense. These are just like randomly, why would I make the box bigger? I don't no, know. That's fine. I like these kind, this kinds of examples. Um, and a lot of it often comes from designers, and then you just have to translate it into your language of, of animation. So we have the, the background going from, from the top of the parent to the top of the button. And the change is that it should then be anchored all the way to the bottom. So if I click it, it will stretch yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is obviously a very simple example of an, a constraint layout. And um, if like constraint layout allows you to chaining views and to like position a view by a rotation in a, on a circle and, and whatnot. So you can, you can go really fancy here. Um, again, be careful if you're supporting phones on a lower end, this might overpower your phone, but you know, you can do it. It's possible. And it's a pretty sleek way of, of doing things. Um, I had something. So one thing that you need to keep in mind here is it will only animate direct children, which with a constraint layout usually doesn't, is not a problem because the point of a constraint layout is to not have a hierarchy. So just be aware if you have a nested layout in a constraint layout, it will not be taken into account. It, the children will not be taken into account for these animations. Um, it's just one of those gotchas that if you come across this, you just want to know that that's the problem. Um, it only animates layout changes. So as, we, as I said earlier, the value animator, for example, can also change a color of a view, um, but that doesn't change the positioning or the relation, so it will not show up in a constraint layout um, change. And if you inflate an XML layout, and then later in code, you, for example, say you change a constraint, that will not be taken into account. So be careful, like define all your relations, your initial relations in your XML layout and don't do any of them in code. And, and that's probably a very mysterious um, yes, thing very hard to go to wrong. If, you, if, if, you don't, if you're not aware of that and you do the code and it's not doing what you think it's supposed to be doing, probably yeah. take a lot of, of uh, searching to figure out why it's not working. That's why I like mentioning these because at least you've heard it and maybe it pops into your head when you have the problem. Um, so, and then, as I said, I have a slide for, but this is literally just taken from the, from the Android website about the physics animations, which is a spring and a fling. Um, and so there's a library for this. Um, but again, this is not animations 101. This is animations three or four. Um, and I would, I try to master all the other ones we talked about first before going into this one. Um, so if I count, there are what, eight different kinds of animations compared with two that there were about three or four years ago? This is just an enormous amount of um, power. And it's the typical Android thing, right? Like you can do it in many different ways and it's on you to decide. And they're starting to acknowledge this at least, which I really like. Um, like they are aware that this is a problem and not so much with animations, but more with like, how do I run something in the background appropriately for different use cases <laughs> this kind of stuff. Um, and I think they're starting to address this. Um, so, but right but now, it does mean that developers have all kinds of options and anything you pretty much want to do, you, you're able to do somehow and maybe even able to do it without too much effort. Yes, but sometimes you also do it and then it has side effects that you are not aware of. 
Right, right, right. That's the problem with Android, I find often. But you can usually get it done. It's just like, is it really a good way that you did it? And that's hard to find out often. And, Only and your best friends will tell you that it wasn't a good way. If you have nice coworkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have questions from our listeners here, from our attendees? Been particularly silent, and I want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you have. Nope. Nope. Okay. There was a lot of a lot of stuff. Vera, do you have any wrap up words, or if you don't, then I mean, I, my I would just say oh, wait, think... we've got a question here. Hold on. All right, on the resource directory, I could see like for the resource type, there's anime and there's animator. Yes. I can see where exactly you define your XML like. Yes. So this is very specifically uh, defined. Um, a view animation, which is the, the old way of doing things, they, they had the anim folder for, so they have to go into the anim folder. Okay. And when you define an object animator, it has to go into the animator folder. <laughs> um, and if you define an animated vector, because it is technically an animated vector drawable, it goes into the drawable folder. That's a good point. And you have to be careful for that because it literally won't compile or, or it will crash depending on what, what you're violating. Um, if will it's not in the right folder. error message if you're, if you're putting them in the wrong place? Sorry? Will you get an informative error message if you're putting yeah, them? Yeah, I remember, let me see. I think if I'm, I think I remember, let's see. I remember I even got a lint message, which I thought was pretty sleek. Um, where's refactor? Move. So we're going to move it. Yeah. So now we moved our abject animator up here and then it already See, it says XML file should be an animator, not anim, which I think is as expressive as it can Very get. Nice. Um, so it's, it's pretty good about that. Um, and you won't be able to build from pretty sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, like it, it creates a, a, a little, I mean, if you use animators, you probably won't have an anim folder because you're not using a view animator at, uh, animation at that point. Um, so, it's just because I had all the examples in my, in my example app that I have all these, but it's probably going to be less for if you, if you, if you don't make an example app that shows all of the ways of doing. <laughs> have, what, have we answered your question? Yes. Very good. Awesome. Do we have other questions? No. Okay. Well, Thank you very much for attending. And Vera, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I'm going to post this on YouTube. It'll be available very soon. I'll give you time to get your get your screen back and. Oh, sorry. I, I was just cleaning it up. I shouldn't okay. maybe do that right now. So All right, I... while you're while you're doing that, I'll just wrap up by saying thank you yeah. very much. Um, it's been Vera Kern. It's been Android Animations. And you find it on YouTube, and uh, we'll be posting more of these very soon. Thank you again. Thank you very much, too.